Welcome to Best Friends. It's our springtime edition. Today is the first full day of spring. Spring means lots of things in our furry, fuzzy corner of the world. It means that hormones are in play, and so we're going to have kittens and puppies soon. Uh, kittens more often than puppies. Puppies are kind of a year-round thing. Um, but the thing with cats is that they're going to be going into heat and producing babies. Um, wanted to let you know that one of our sister organizations, Concern for Animals, uh, is having a special uh, promotion, I guess you would call it, I don't know, spay motion, whatever. Um, if you get hold of Concern for Animals, and we can give you their phone number at the shelter, um, you will be able to um, spay a cat for $3, which is an amazing thing. This is uh, through a grant from the Animal um, Control and, uh, nah, I forget the name of it, we, recall, we call it the Federation of animal care and control agencies, but it's the Federation for short. It's a statewide group, and uh, they are making this grant available to uh, certain local organizations, and Concern for Animals is one of them. And so during the month of April primarily, although it will bleed over a little bit into May, um, they are going to be doing for seven Saturdays I believe, no, seven Wednesdays. Make sure that that's uh, correct. And it's going to run through April 2nd to May 14th, and uh, you will need to furnish proof of income and um, residency in Thurston County um, for them to be able to help you with that. But it's a great price, my goodness. And um, there would be some very grateful cats, I suspect. So that's a good thing. Um, remember, we also have spay-neuter grants, both through the Humane Society and through SNAP, which is Spay or Neuter All Pets. And um, that's another option for you. Uh, those, uh, at least the SNAP grant, is not income related. And so it would be available to anyone because everyone has questionable financial fluency, well, at least I do, so I figure everyone else does. And today we're going to talk about some alternate pets as well as cats and dogs. We have visiting with us one of, I believe, 14 guinea pigs uh, that arrived. The significance of the Friskies box is just don't even pay attention. It's the only box we had. It's a very chatty little guinea pig. They all are, you know. Oh, yes, well. And very young, too. It's a baby. And it would really rather be in a box. Luck of the draw, it got me. Anyway, they are adorable little fellas, and they are good pets. So, if you're interested, come on by. We have quite an assortment, and all of them would be happy to chat with you. This is a little uh, female, spayed female, uh, Dutch, and uh, like most bunnies, she's a little on the nervous side. She will come up to the front of her cage to be petted. She certainly loves carrots and parsley and um, the standard apple kinds of treats, you know, they all love that. 
and yet um, rabbits being rabbits because they're genetically food chain um, are a little jumpy about going into new environments and being touched and being held so it's something you have to kind of work up to. Um, she particularly loves being scratched and will hold still for quite some time for that and I always find that an admirable trait in a rabbit and she has some other wonderful things about her. Her lovely spots and a wonderful fur coat. It's almost impossible to resist rabbit ears. She's a little on the nervous side. You'll <laughs> notice that she's sort of hyperventilating here. Well, it's the first time she's ever seen a camera. It's a scary thing. There you go, pumpkin head. Here we have another alternative pet. This is a ferret. It's a uh, white. It's not a red-eyed white, though, which is kind of unusual. Well, maybe not that unusual. Not in the ferret world. It's just that I don't see that many of them. Um, it's a male, a neutered male. And um, like most of the ferret group, hey, guy, they're a weasel. They're incredibly inquisitive. Sometimes they're very snuggly. This one has other ideas. They are terrific escape artists. And uh, they can make you laugh when nothing else can make you laugh. I really rather like this guy. I'm holding it in the, in the off ferret position, which makes them rather easy to medicate and so forth. They have very tough skin, though. Yes. You look for the little dots inside his ears that tell you that he has been neutered. And um, that's always uh, kind of a reassuring thing. They're also usually descented when you find those dots, which is kind of nice because they belong to a group called Mustela Day, which is pretty descriptive, isn't it? Wow, you day ferret. I love ferrets. Um, some things that you need to know about ferrets is that they are included in the state law requiring rabies immunization. And um, they are terrific at getting out of things. Uh, one of the main reasons we see ferrets is not because people have given them up. It's because they have gone visiting the neighbors and the neighbors have no idea what to do with them. And so they end up here. Um, they are a great pet, but not if you already have rodents or birds in your house because they are predators and um, they don't change their personality or their genetic makeup just because they're also pets, so bear that in mind. This guy is a neutered male. He uh, had probably been stray for a while when we ended up with him. He had an abscessed um, canine that we had to have pulled. He had a full complement of parasites, ear mites, fleas, worms of every description, and they are now gone, 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 and gone. And he's very glad, and he is ready to go home and be a terrific pet because that is exactly what he is. He has a great personality and he is very tolerant. He does not need to be an outdoor cat, <laughs> although over a long period of time and in the right environment where he would be safe outside, he would probably do well enough as an indoor outdoor kitty. He's really enjoying the catnip. Yeah, they don't have catnip out on the streets, do they? No. <laughs> this little female, we have a theme going here, black and white. You notice the black and white rabbit. 
the white ferret, the black and white cat, the black cat. <laughs> You're not going to see much color here today. <laughs> We're all about keeping it crisp and clean. <laughs> This little girl is less than a year old. She's probably about eight months. Um, she just had her first rabies immunization this morning. If she's looking a little more alert than usual, she's still trying to figure that one out. But this is, um, this is going to be a, a good pet for any kind of family. I think she needs to be an indoor cat for quite a while before she gets her... Um, where she gets her sense of familiarity with your environment uh, firmly settled in her mind. Sometimes when cats come in as strays, when they've been left to their own devices, um, being inside the house for a while kind of helps reset their sense of belonging. Um, cats really relate better to place than to people and uh, establishing your home as her place is very important. That's one of the reasons that there's so many issues about moving when you have cats. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things that's very unsettling for them. I think she is just gorgeous. She has a great coat. It's that black that looks like it shines from the inside so pretty. This, um, this little girl is slightly older than the last one that you saw and she is, um, her family was m military and uh, was transferred to an area where they cannot keep pets and so she came here to us. She has remarkable uh, markings on her coat it's so pretty. She has a white vest that has a black line through it. It really looks like she's wearing some kind of fancy shirt. Wonderful, healthy girl. I love the white whiskers against that black coat. And she is extremely affectionate. Very loving girl. which is nice because I don't think she's in heat yet. So this is the real her. You always worry about that in the springtime with cats because sometimes they can show you a very different personality when they're in heat and motivated to make friends than they would if uh, they weren't. Anyway, good choice. This is a very affectionate cat. She's also not terribly skitsy, and so probably a family even with little kids would be good. This kitty is um, kind of a relief from the black and white theme we have going. She is a tortoiseshell. She is spayed. She is declawed. She does not like children, and uh, probably, I'm just guessing, isn't all that fond of other cats and really hates dogs. So, if you have a home that could fulfill her requirements, we would suggest that you come down and visit with her because she's a great cat. Meow. Meow. This kitty is, um, named Peekaboo, which I think is kind of cute, but it's also indicative because she likes to hide under things and then peek out at you if you're lucky. Otherwise, you have to really go looking. Uh, she was recently spayed um, and I don't know what to tell you. She is, she's going to make a really good pet. I'm not thinking that she is so eager to be around people that she's going to seek them out, though. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a good cat for a home that's, that's very 
excitable. Uh, I think mostly she's a little shyer than most of the cats that I've showed you so far today, although she will definitely come around. See, she's already doing better, even though her tail is fluffed into a bottle brush. <laughs> She's still purring. <laughs> Conflicted emotions here. Stay with us. We're going to go to the dog area and um, visit. As you can see, this is a husky, a very pretty one that has a really nice, healthy coat. Sometimes when we get huskies at this time of the year, they're starting to blow under coat and they look like they're Gabby or something. I know I had a treat and what happened to it? Oh, you know what? I see it. It's right here. International dog language for look here. And we can't follow that. Isn't that interesting? Where is your nose, dear? Oh, okay. I guess that told me the nose is plugged up or something. <laughs> anyway. Just a bit about huskies in general. If they get bored, they howl <gasps> like that. Um, it, they can be quite noisy. They also tend to have a mind of their own. So uh, training is sort of a must. At least they know what they're supposed to do then, or so do you, um, even if they don't do it. You know, your other end is more attractive. There, that's good. That was very good. Uh, they can be very affectionate dogs. They do tend to um, kill small animals. Um, depends on what you're after. I find that to be kind of a scary trait. And actually, they can kill larger animals as well. Uh, but normally, that's in other settings. You have to have a six-foot fence if you're going to adopt this dog. Oh, she finally found it. <laughs> what a good girl. Um, because um, they are also escape artists. Yes, besides running the Iditarod, um, they can make it into the next county in the blink of an eye. But beyond that, they also make very good pets for a family that understands them and understands that the beautiful package that's wrapped around these genetics um, is something that you love <laughs> while making sure they don't get themselves in trouble. This is Brownie. Brownie's um, one of our, um, well, I wouldn't exactly call him geriatric, but he is an older dog. He's approaching 10. And uh, he came to us in kind of uh, scary shape in the sense that he, his tail had been broken at some point and uh, we had to have it amputated because there was no feeling in it at all. He's very food motivated, as you can see, which is a good thing if you want to bond with the dog. He has a very soft mouth. Um, we really would not recommend that he be around small children. Uh, we don't know his past. We do think that he's like an Akita lab mix. I know. Yes, that was very good. Um, he is neutered. And uh, if you need a quieter dog to share time with and go on leisurely walks and do things like that, then Brownie would be a very good choice. I think he's a very nice old boy. Yes, he is. This is Gianni. Um, Gianni is a neutered male. He's already chipped and everything. He came from us, came back to us now. Um, yay, owner, when you find that it's not possible to um, uh, hold on to a pet because lives change, then it's best to bring it back to the shelter that you adopted it from, at least 
uh, at try because they have an obligation to the dog, or at least we feel we do. And uh, Gianni's a good example. He's a herding breed, and when he was adopted from us, he was a small puppy. Now, he is, um, I know you are so cute. Yes, you are. Now, he may not have his own group of sheep. We don't require that for our herding breeds, but we do require secure confinement because you don't need him out herding pedestrians, and that's what he would do. He also has some separation anxiety, which is not impossible to work with, but it is better if there is somebody home with him all the time or if he is simply with someone all the time. That means that he would be a, a pretty good go to work with you dog. Uh, he might be a pretty good um, stay in the car for short periods dog, although I would never trust one fresh out of um, the shelter in my car alone. That would be a disaster. And especially for one that you know has separation anxiety. Sometimes crate training is, works really well with these guys, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes getting another dog works really well, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on the dog. Um, what you don't want is this dog in an apartment uh, setting and you gone, because you'll have neighbors that will be very unhappy with you, and um, you may have some damage to the living arrangement. So, that said, Johnny's a pretty nice guy. He's a little on the nervous side, and a lot of that could be taken care of with lots of exercise. This would be a great dog if you're a jogger. He has a nice, lightweight body, and uh, he will probably be able to accompany you on pretty long runs. These, the herding breeds um, tend to be pretty athletic as long as you pay attention to basic needs like their feet and making sure that they have plenty of water. So, good boy, isn't he handsome? If I were a sheep, I would vote you most beautiful dog. I would. You know, we talked earlier about this being the very first full day of spring. It's also a transition time uh, in our weather, and it is a good time to pay close attention to your pet's immune response. Okay, of course, spring, immune response. Why wouldn't you think of that? The thing is that with uh, extra cold nights and warm days, um, animals kind of uh, get shocked into spring and it's not uh, not the best thing for them. Uh, they may need extra food if they're outdoor animals. You still need to pay attention to making sure that they have plenty of dry bedding and insulated areas where they can maintain body heat, uh, places where they can stay dry. Um, with our rather unpredictable rain around here. You can go to work in the morning and come home to a saturated backyard and uh, hopefully that doesn't include the dog in it. So with that, it's also a good time to check and make sure that your pet is current on shots because all of that um, changing in terms of temperatures can stress an animal and it's best if they're current on their immunizations so they don't pick up something that could be actually life-threatening. Um, so, hey, with that cheery note, come on down and visit us. We're at 3120 Martin Way. We'd love to see you.